All right, so uh, take two of my first part of this tutorial. I've got my model primed in black, and I've started mixing up the pink for her lace skirts. And the way I started doing that was I used Mechrite Red and Skull White. So I'm, I'm going to be basing what I'm doing, painting my painting scheme on the Games Workshop 360 rotating figure of Isabella von Karstein, so I'm really super stoked that they have that up, but I just basically mixed the two paints, and I used the clamshell here that she came in, and usually I put parchment paper down first, because that will keep it, keep it wet uh, if you put a little bit of water underneath, but I can't find my parchment paper, so I just mixed the two together to a consistency that I liked, and that is about it, so we're going to start painting. Yeah, like I said, I really love that Games Workshop is putting three sixty views of their models, so painters can really see how their how the heavy metal team went about painting these really fantastic, fine, detailed figures. So there you've got pink roughly lace. Next thing we're going to paint is the red of her skirts and her sleeves under her black armor. And for that, going to be using just straight Mechrite Red. So here's my Mechrite Red, some on my brush. Oh, Izzy, Vlad is going to be so happy when you're all painted. You know, Games Workshop has these ribbons on her back as, um, they look like they've colored them like creamy denim stone colored. I don't know if I like that. I might change it. I might make them like a baby blue, but, um, conversely though, Games Workshop is painting these roses over here the bottom of a skirt like blue and green so I don't know if I want to contrast with that too much There's so much great detail in this figure I'm 
sorry. Sometimes you have to you have to hold your model at different angles just to get where you need to go. So if I do that, I, I apologize. having parchment paper and putting a layer of water underneath it in one of these fine cast or plastic clamshells is that the paint stays moist for a good long time. Like right now with my air conditioner going, I'm pretty sure that the pink paint that I mixed up only six minutes ago is already dry. Yeah. That's okay. So up a little bit more before we continue. So I was reading up the Isabella Fluff and in the new Vampire Counts book, not sure how much they changed from the old one, but uh, I love that, I, I, in fact I think I remember reading in the old Vampire Counts book how she was this beautiful daughter of, you know, the crazy Otto von Drock who ruled Sylvania before Vlad came along and um, Vlad said he'd rather marry off his daughter to a demon rather than let her be married to one of his rivals in, in the province of Sylvania and uh, and then along comes Vlad and he's like I'll marry your daughter in fact I remember reading in the because I actually read the first Warhammer or Black Library books I've ever read was the Vampire Wars trilogy which kind of gives all the background detail of the, oh my gosh, I'm not even painting in frame. All the background detail of the the vampire counts, all, the von Karsteins, and their rise to power. The great thing about it, though, is it's told from humans' perspectives or their you know their foes because the vampires were so long lived that you need human protagonists. You also can't really like get into their heads you know what I mean because vampires are such alien creatures uh, evil and you know savage creatures that you need a human voice to to take you through it okay so there's the bottom half we're gonna continue with the reds into the um, top part of her of, of what she's wearing underneath the armor, so that you can kind of see in the mainly in her sleeves. Looks like her body is completely covered by this black armor, so we're gonna go into where her sleeves are. boss keep it in focus war boss I get so caught up you know trying to find the right angle 
Lady Bits. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break and then we'll come right back. All right, we're back, and uh, I realized while studying my my guide, the 360 model on the Games Workshop website, that her cuffs are also painted in pink. So I mixed up a little bit more pink, which again, you wouldn't have to do if you have parchment paper. I just really highly suggest getting parchment paper. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I wish I knew where mine was. And I'm just gonna paint the cuffs around her hands. Mmm, girl, we're gonna make you so pretty. All right. Next thing we're gonna paint is the skin. Her skin, we're going to go with See, I'm, I'm looking at the model on the Games Workshop website and I can't decide if they went with Deneb Stone or Astronomicon Grey, but you know what, I'm gonna go with Deneb Stone, which is also coincidentally what we're gonna use to paint her massive wig as well. <clears throat> so the next step is Deneb Stone for her skin and her, and her weave. Definitely want to make sure that you don't get too much paint on. And I'm actually going to start from the bottom up with her sexy, sexy legs. And her lady bits. Can you all see this? Perfect. Alright. I was reading um, the comments on my on my unboxing video and one of the comments really knowledgeable in the know about about sculptors suggested that this could be a Juan Diaz sculpt. And I remember the last, with the last release of the previous Vampire Counts book, they actually talked to the sculptors and John Blanche who was the artist of, of, you know, a lot of Games Workshop stuff and asked about, you know, how do you get the imagery, how do you build these models, how do you take it from the imagining a concept and creating some art to creating an actual model, like the Vargolf model they showed, a uh, basis for for it and the, the, the art that it was based upon and the actual model is really close to what John Blanche had, had created, had, had envisioned and um, I would be really interested to know who sculpted these new models, like the, 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 the Karen Wraith Oh, the Karen Wraith looks so good, and I was just thinking, looking at my box of of Black Knights and, and Hex Wraiths, because I'm going to do an unboxing for them later, I was like, wow, how come the, the Hex Wraith cavalry guys couldn't look like spooky flying uh, horsey versions of, of the Karen Wraith? Because the Karen Wraith, you know, floating up over the ground just looks so, so awesome. in there, get all up in there, yeah. But you know what, regardless, whoever sculpted you, is he? I'd like to shake his hand and ask him, what the 
heck were you thinking with this creepy spinal column in your hair? I, it came to me the other night when I was looking at the model trying to figure out, you know, how I was going to paint her. It's really really reminds me of the Bram Stoker's Dracula with the way Gary Oldman's wig in the beginning is all pinned up and looks really from the back like you know like a really disgusting spinal column with all these things shooting out of it that's his hair the wig but but still Gross. I really should be using a smaller brush for this. <clears throat> You're really going to need a fine brush or a brush that you can get in there and do some fine work with when you get to the necklace in a bit. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. We just want smooth, even coverage, especially on her face. Because that is where all the attention and the focus is going to go. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some water and I'm smoothing out some of these more crude brush strokes. If the paint is still a little bit wet then it'll be pretty easy to manipulate. You know what I need? I need I need somebody who will sit behind me and like slap my shoulder every time my model goes out of focus so I can look at the camera and look at the screen up there. So I'm really sorry if a lot of this isn't getting on the camera. I'm trying to do it as, as well as I can. There. Beautiful. Très magnifique. Oh, fine cast. Oh, fine cast. You can tell a lot about a sculptor and a model from its hands. Is that true or did I just hear that somewhere? Yeah, I'm really happy Games Workshop is able to sculpt these more feminine models. Because compared to like the the female Catachin, that old metal model, or even, ugh, I keep referencing because of how, how much I disliked her, the, the old Isabella model. And even the old Von Karstein Vlad model it was a little, little much. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our next step, and we are going to paint 
the armor, her bodice, her shoulders, her gauntlets, uh, shoulder pads, and her leg protectors. We're gonna paint those in uh, chaos black, and we're just gonna, gonna clean those up. So I'm going to stop and start and get that done. All right, so I got started on the leggings, and um, and then I was like looking at her, you know, the exposed part of her legs, and I was like, wait, how are you? How does what I'm? What are? What are you gonna have to paint the? And then I saw that she's wearing like frilly pink lady underwear, and so I was like, awesome, and also G W. You guys. So I mixed up more pink paint. Now I'm going back in there and... Oh, Izzy. I'm so sorry. I'm so... I feel so dirty right now. Uh... But... Juan Diaz, you sly dog. At least he has some, like, fashion sense because <laughs> the, the center part, like right over the crotch, is... is pink and red but the frills on the outside of it are white so at least he's got some kind of fashion sense so I'm gonna see if I can make sense of it on on my Izzy so you see how the center is that same pink color of her of, of the ruffles of her cuffs and her skirts and now we're gonna go in with some whites I think this will show up better when we've when we've shaded and highlighted the legs, but this is just a base coat. We're just doing base coats. It can't even really get there because the paint is still wet. So, all right, that's just a guideline. It's going to be for later. We can fix that up. I'm just going to touch up her touch up her legs. Sounds so dirty. I'm not gonna touch up your legs. I'm just gonna put more paint on it. Ah. Uh, okay. Where was we? Where was we? We was painting some chaos black into the black parts of her armor. So, if you don't use a black primer, or if your black primer doesn't go you know, if you're not able to fill in all these back recesses, this is when you're going to have to do it. So that anyone picking up your model and looking at it sees that the back part, the most shadowed recesses, are suitably shaded. So now we're going to paint the corset. <laughs> she shops at Vampire Count Secret. My, uh, my reference drawing, or the reference art, the 360 model on Games Workshop's website.
I'm cutting down my chaos black with water. You can also use Vada black. Mainly what we want is for the black to not be very thick and to get into all the shadowy recesses. We don't want to just use straight Vada black though because we don't want it to only pool in the recesses we want to give it. Give all the surface areas a nice even coverage. So either water or bad at black to cut your black down. head crest <clears throat> I'm gonna have to fix that later I messed up her hair dude So as you can see, the pink makes a really, really nice contrast when the, the gauntlet, the armor on her arm is nice and jet black. It's really nice. There we go. Okay, let's reward ourselves and do something fun in the next step. Let's, what can we do? Let's shade, um, we can't really go on a skin, shade of skin yet because the black is still trying. So let's shade her, her dress, all of the red parts. Because what I'd like to do next is get onto the ribbons and like the sashes and the the flowers and stuff. So we're gonna use ball ball red. And all you're gonna do is really just start in the recesses and drag down the recesses and folds of her dress will naturally take most of the the wash and then they won't pool so much near the bottom, which is what you want. You want it to kind of spread out a little bit. <clears throat> I love washes.
and then you're just gonna kind of stab them into the, the sleeves. Just get some of the wash that has pooled in and just kind of stab them up into where her sleeves are and any other red areas of clothing. Pretty nice. All right, I've got a little more juice in my camera before I have to recharge it, so we're gonna paint the flowers and the ribbons. So there are roses on Izzy's dress, and we're gonna paint the blooms of the roses in regal blue. Now we're going to paint the surrounding little blossoms. Okay, I'm going to choose to do it in Graveyard Earth. And you might take a look at them and think it's more yellow or more brown or red. So another alternate would be snake bite leather um, as a base coat for it. But really, it's it's kind of up to, up to you. I also noticed that She's missing a little bit of red near the blossom, so I'm gonna tidy that up right quick. There. She's also got some roses down here on the left side, as well as pinning her ribbons to the back of her skirt. <coughs> but I'm gonna start with the regal blue. Just my light a little bit. that the wash is still not dry so I'm gonna see if I can get some of it out of there. There's too much wash if you look back and you're like oh I put too much wash it's not drying it's gonna leave a water stain then what I do is I just drag back up. Yeah, the watch is still wet. You can see that it immediately started bleeding up into the skirt, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer on you and try to clean up some of the mess we made. Don't ever wanna rush the wash process. I'll clean this up in between clips. For right now, I'm just going to put some mech right red back. I'll have to go back in with more wash later, but I'm just trying to give you a <clears throat> give you a sense of what my plan is for these guys. Okay, and then now we're jumping to the the roses on the left side of her dress. double checking to make sure that it looks like the GW one. You've got two main blossoms. There, and then we're gonna take a look now at the blooms 
over here pinning her ribbon of her skirt. So it's going to be kind of weird because the sword arm is right there, but the bloom sticks out a lot more than little yellow blossoms next to it. <clears throat> okay, I got a frog in my throat. So I'm gonna wait to paint the, the little blooms next to the roses until let, let you know let the wash the red wash dry a little bit more. So what I'd like to do now is paint the cloak just to give it a bit of a uh, different color. And it looks like the cloak is uh, brownish turning to cream so I'm gonna paint the cloak with Camry Brown and highlight our way up brush has seen a lot of action. I need to retire it. It doesn't deserve this treatment. I've painted 200 night goblins, 75 orcs. I was living a nice cushy retirement in my in that coffee cup. You bring me out for this. Seems to be almost fine detail work for a vampire count. More boss tape. The heck with you. My paper sounds like Don Knotts. Alright. I am done. <clears throat> Ta da! The cloak is done, ready for washing. Uh, since it's going to take long anyway for the, the wash to dry on the skirt, I'm going to add a second wash now. And this wash is going to be... Add that black to the skirt, and the secret ingredient, a sermon blue. What? That's right kids. The deepest folds, we are going to create nice deep shadows, first with bad at black. And also use that to color in these these rips in the fabric. Like that. So 
you might be asking, well, what was the point of using Baal Red then? Well, the red ties together the color and the cloak so that you can have really nice transition and so that the, the cloak itself doesn't just look flat. But what the black does is it really gives you shadows. So you're basically going to paint the black into the folds. You're not going to touch the flat areas. You're just going to give a hint of it into to these folds there. Okay, next we're going to add a little bit of a sermon blue to the deepest, darkest folds of Our Lady's skirts. So really, you're just going to get a little bit on the tip of your brush and just go like where the black is thickest. And this is just to give it a little color so it's not strictly black or red. You shouldn't even see the blue really. It should just be hinted at. There we go. So nice and simple, just like that. Next, what we're gonna do is, I, you know, I, I was looking at the website and I was like, what color is that? I just can't figure out what color the, the the leaf blossoms next to the blue roses are and I've decided you know the closest thing is Gretchen Green because it's kind of brown it's kind of green if you take a look at it yourself um, you might have a different opinion on what it is but I'm gonna go with Gretchen Green And then when we shade and highlight, I'm actually going to pick it out in more neutral uh, beige colors. Like Graveyard Earth and Commando Kaki. We're going to take our hawk turquoise and we're going to paint the ribbons on the back of her skirt as well as highlight the, the blue roses.
Yeah, I think this is a much better direction to go with these ribbons than the one the heavy metal painters did. I just think this sort of flash of color back here is really feminine and nice. It's a nice contrast to the red. Okay. There we go. Now, while we let that dry, we're gonna take some Leviathan Purple and we're gonna start shading the pink lace on the inside of our skirts. So this is gonna be a kind of tricky one because we're gonna be shooting for, we have to be careful with our, our brush because we're actually gonna be shooting for the uppermost part of the lace. Like we don't want to get down close to the bottom just where the upper folds are and what this is going to do like that is allow us to highlight the bottom part closer to a pinkish and white colors. The bottom part of the, the fringe of the lace. So I'm just kind of running my brush through the top parts and letting the letting the wash kind of work its way down by itself. Just like that. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some plain old Devlin mud and we're going to wash her cape. So we've got some Devlin mud here. This is the, the feral, oops, sorry, the feral and savage part of Our Lady Isabella is this cape. It's because it looks so out of place with the rest of her fine, fine clothes. It's meant for practical use, you know, like on the battlefield keeping her warm or whatever. Well, she's dead, so she doesn't have to be warm, but I think it's just a, the way that the heavy metal paint, painters painted it. Heavy metal painters. So we're gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, we're actually going to start painting the gold. So she's got some gold on her that we're gonna get to work now painting. And the gold is, looking at the Games Workshop website, the gold is her choker around her neck, the hilt of her sword, the bat on her bodice. She's got like a bat kind of cinching the front of her bodice. Her shoes, at the bottom of her shoes, she's got some bat pieces, and the, her cup. Anything else? Looks like that might be it. Kind of looks like they're doing some non-metallic 
metal gold for her hair. Yeah, so that <clears throat> that this spinal cord thing in the back of her head is like a, a hairpin, and um, it's held in place by at the front by some silver a silver headband. Sorry, let me get it in focus. So so that connects to the band in the front with all these roses and stuff. So we can get painted. I started painting the roses and everything, um, but I wanted to do it in conjunction with the gold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Calvin Brown and we're gonna paint all these gold areas. Uh, before we do that, I'm just gonna go back over and paint the other the other gold pieces that we haven't hit yet. Or not gold pieces, but the the flowers and and whatnot. So she's got roses in her hair. She's got these blue roses, blue roses in her hair. And she's got like two on the left, or on two on her right, and one on her left. Get some of that off. Should adjust the focus on my camera. There we go. Now you can see and I can see. Oh, camera on my uh, battery and my camera's running a little bit low, so I'm gonna recharge it and we'll continue in just a little bit.